In this video, I will explain how to lose weight by monitoring your ketones, your sugar, and the health of your metabolism with this test strip that's under $20. In fact, this urine test strip costs less than a quarter and you can buy this on Amazon in bulk, 100 strips for $20. This is what doctors use to check your urine when we think you have a urinary tract infection. This is also what we check to make a quick assessment of your metabolism. People with persistent high sugars, excessive fat, and high sugars with ketones have a weakened immune system and poor metabolism. Keep in mind, blood sugar is just one indication of your metabolism. Metabolism. When you have poor metabolism, you will feel unwell, it will disrupt your sleep, it will reduce your energy. Serious metabolic issues actually lead to emergency room visits and hospital stays. And for as little as a quarter a day, you can save $3,000, which is a cost of an ER visit for a day or staying in the hospital for a day. Don't you think that's worth it? There are three values on the urine dipstick that represent your metabolism, and they are urinary glucose, urinary ketones, and the the third one is urine pH. Your metabolism controls everything when it comes to your health. So whenever something doesn't feel right, you can bet there's a metabolic problem behind that symptom. If you're tired, have tingling in your feet, if you're peeing a lot, especially at night, then you may have a metabolic disorder with processing sugar called diabetes. If you don't make insulin in your pancreas or if you have excessive fat in your muscles and liver, this causes a desensitization in insulin. Either way, you will start urinating out glucose if you eat carbohydrates. So just know your body always makes some kind of glucose because it is essential to survival. If you have ants that hover around your toilet, you'll see that they're collecting on your pee because that's sugar. And that's a clue that you need to get your urine tested. In the old days, by testing your urine, your doctor diagnosed and monitored diabetes. Today, we have replaced testing your urine with finger sticks or skin blood tests for sugars, which is both more accurate, however, they are painful and more expensive. And because of the pain and sometimes the cost, some people just don't do it. So as a diabetic, if you won't poke yourself, then consider dipping your urine to tell if your metabolism is being ruined by your diet. Essentially, if you're eating high fat and high carbohydrate together, they will make you glucose intolerant and cause diabetes. And you will see this as a reflection of your urinary pee. If your body can't handle the load of glucose, then your urine or your kidneys will pee it out and you can see it when you collect it and dip it. So if you have any shade of brown, you need to see a doctor. You have poor metabolism and glucose intolerance. Now, if you are pre-diabetic, if you're pregnant, if you're gaining weight or simply have a lot of belly fat or you wanna just improve your metabolism, then for a quarter a day, you can find out a lot about your health. High blood sugars are toxic to your body, especially your blood vessels and your kidneys have a built-in system to expel it in your urine. Now, now, while you're waiting for your doctor's visit, fix your diet, avoid fat, basically reduce animal products like chicken, beef, and processed foods like cookies, cakes, donuts, cereals, and even bread. Now you can go on a low carbohydrate diet, but in general, it is hard to sustain as a lifestyle. And it's also micronutrient deficient. I generally prefer a sustainable lifestyle change to improve your metabolism. I think this is a great way to know how your food will affect your metabolism. And you can use this test strip to see what your meals are doing after you eat. Your blood sugar will affect your growth hormones, especially insulin. And keep in mind, when you have more insulin, it's inflammatory. So anything good in excess is not good for you, right? So over time, if you're requiring more insulin to control that blood sugar, then you're actually causing your body more damage. So the goal of type one diabetics should be to control what they eat, use a baseline insulin, but not to have so much insulin that it desensitizes you, makes you gain weight, especially belly fat. But having no urinary sugar by pumping more insulin is not the solution, right? So this is why we get in trouble when we follow only only one biomarker to measure your health. Fat is really the culprit of getting desensitized to insulin, what some people can call insulin resistance. And there's two ways your body hoards fat. The first is eating excessive calories, and the second is basically eating fat, especially trans fat and saturated fat foods. Now, saturated fat foods are found in those delicious processed bakery items, deep fried foods, in meat like hamburgers, your chicken breast, hot dogs, and fish. So if you're struggling with blood sugar and rising insulin requirements, you should consider reducing these foods to once a day and replace it with a high protein rich whole plant 
like beans. The symptoms of high blood sugar is really the root cause of the problem, which is excessive saturated fat. And remember, the saturated fat destroys your muscle and your liver metabolism. When you dip your urine, this is a reflection of that. And of course, if you don't eat any carbohydrates, you won't see the glucose intolerance until you eat some carbohydrates. So the glucose value on the dipstick may not be helpful if you're on a low carbohydrate diet or if you're controlling your blood sugar with certain medications such as SGLT2 inhibitors. So these medications will produce a ton of sugar because that's how these drugs work to control your sugar. This is also why you can get more infections because you're basically making your urine into a form of sugar water for fungus and bacteria to drink. Now, whether you are peeing out sugar because you're a poorly controlled diabetic or a new onset diabetic or taking a GLT2 inhibitor, you are all at serious risk of urinary tract infections. And when you pick up these drugs from the pharmacy, get this FDA warning. These drugs change your biochemistry and immunity but it doesn't fix the root problem, which is your diet. This is why no amount of pills or shots will fix a poor diet. All medications have side effects, and as medical doctors, managing side effects are a part of prescribing medications. This is why I always encourage all my patients to work on improving their lifestyles so that one day they can graduate from these medicines. But never just quit your medications without working with your doctor. Some medications need to be slowly weaned off. Now, in case you're wondering why sugar is bad, let me explain how it ages you. Sugar is super sticky and will gunk up your tissues, sticking to proteins and fats and forming new chemicals called age, literally AGE, advanced glycation end product. This process causes inflammation on your skin to make you look old, ages your organs, including your kidneys, heart, brain, weakens your immune system, destroys nerves and blood vessels from the tiny ones on the tippy toes of your feet to the tinier ones in the back of your eye. If this continues, you will have permanent nerve damage and blood vessel damage throughout your entire body. And you will notice this first in the smallest vessels. You will also lose function in your bladder, your balance, including your eyesight. This scenario doesn't have to happen. If you can catch it early, these complications are preventable and reversible through nutrition. Medications can also help with the acute crisis, but it's really not the long-term solution. For most people, the root cause is their food. Diabetes medications may delay complications, but unless you fix the root cause, they will still happen down the road. Type one diabetics, of course, need for life insulin, but the goal should not be to increase your insulin requirements. And for those of you who are trying to do a ketogenic diet and avoiding carbohydrates, you really need to know if you're doing your diet right, because a ketogenic diet is high fat and low carbohydrate, but if you convert that to high fat and medium carbohydrate, you are actually propagating this glucose intolerance. Unfortunately, ketogenic diet is hard for people to sustain. Most people end up eating that high fat, medium carbohydrate diet that'll make you gain weight and become diabetic. This is really the standard American diet. So you have to measure your ketones if you are going to try the ketogenic diet. And you can either use a ketone meter, it's a breath meter, or you can use a urinary dipstick to check for ketones. Now, if you're not positive, then obviously you're not doing your ketogenic diet right. Now, just so I'm clear, I'm not an advocate of the ketogenic diet for weight loss unless you are supervised by a physician. This diet is a medical treatment for people with seizures and certain mental health conditions, but it can be severely damaging to your health if you're not doing it right and if you're not keeping up your greens as well as dietary supplements because it is super restrictive and deficient in many nutrients. Long-term, there's no proof it is actually helpful to your immune system despite a few positive studies in mice we're not mice. Mice live a couple of years. If you eat right, you can live as long as some of my patients who are still active and healthy in their 90s. A word about ketones. Ketones are always in your blood. More ketones are made under stress, such as fastings, getting an infection or illness or prolonged exercise. Ketones form when your body has used up your sugar or glycogen stores, and then you start using fat as fuels. Now, fats make your blood acidic, which is buffered by breaking down muscle tissue. So people who are on a ketogenic diet will first lose just simply water and then they will start losing some muscle which you can measure with a tape around your calves they will begin to shrink in addition if you are peeing out sugar or have high urinary ketones that is actually really bad and you should see a medical doctor right away this may indicate that you have diabetic ketoacidosis which is actually a life-threatening condition another value that is helpful in your blood is acid so your urinary ph is super helpful if your blood is acidic your kidneys 
kidneys will try to pee out more acid and your urine pH will be low. So you can test if your ketogenic diet is making your blood more acidic and that just drinking alkaline water isn't gonna work. A low urinary pH below 6.8 is actually associated with higher rates of kidney stones. So you can counteract this by eating enough green leafy vegetables to try to elevate your urine pH to above 6.8. And you know you're doing a good job when you're checking your urinary pH and your ketones and your sugar. They all are representative of your metabolism. I hope this video was helpful and good luck to your healthcare journey. If you like this video, please join me on my next one. See you there.